Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to why Gen Z humor is so weird. Now, this is something that I've been wanting to explore for a while. Like, I've noticed that, like, some of the, you know, the jokes and the memes and stuff, like, obviously I get them and stuff, but I don't find all of them funny. That could just be, a, maybe my sense of humor is different, but I've noticed that uh, Gen Z humor is a bit kooky sometimes. It's a bit weird. It's a bit, you know, hard to get. Like, it's hard to explain. Like, I wish I'd have made a sort of a com compilation of the memes that I don't get. But uh, yeah, so this video here, I'm hoping it's gonna break it down. Like some of these new age memes that are hitting TikTok and, and Instagram and stuff and, you know, break it down for uh, old guys like me. I say I'm old, but I'm, I'm not old. Like, <laughs> I think I'm a millennial. So yeah, this should be, uh, this should be fun to watch. Let's do it. Generation Z humor. What? <laughs> what is that? I know, right? Like stuff like this. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Why? Why? People find this funny? Isn't Gen Z just a movie about some zombies? <laughs> That's uh oh, <laughs> stinky! It's so weird. Hi, I'm Mr. Sweet, and today I'm going to be giving you a guide into Generation Z's humor. All right, teach but before me. we start talking Educate. about Generation Z, we need to make sure that you don't confuse Generation Z with millennials. You see, Generation Z started in 1995 and has mm. continued through today. Millennial humor was much more simple and could be represented by the easy to understand memes of iFunny, such as the Velociraptor, wherein a Velociraptor scratching his chin would ponder such questions as It's so stupid, but it's funny. If two lefties had an argument, which one would be right? Or the collection of meme templates known as Rage Comics, uh, featuring yeah. such classics troll as face. May Gusta and a troll face. <laughs> Some would I love that troll face. A troll It's just like face. Some would say it wasn't incredibly funny, but you would breathe out of your nose oh, slightly man. and that was enough for them. So how is Generation Z's humor any different? Well, to understand that, you have to understand the background of Generation Z. They were born into the age of iPhones, iPods, iPads, and instant internet, connection to the yeah. internet at nearly all times. Everywhere. This unprecedented accessibility coupled with a little bit too much free time is what led to the first influence of Generation Z's humor. <laughs> When you hear a joke from a friend, it's funny that first time, and then maybe it's funny one more time when you reference it. However, imagine a bunch of people who you don't particularly care for come up and they all start telling the exact same joke. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that joke was funny the first 400 times you said it. This is exactly how the internet works. One person comes up with a meme, and then about a billion other people repost it continuously with slight variations. This over- That's one thing about TikTok that really gets on my nerves. So, like, someone will do a skit, and then a million other people just reenact the same thing. Like they won't change anything. It's like, come on, like how is that original? exposure of jokes is what leads to the concept of oversaturation, which is a concept that members of Gen Z have to deal with on a near hourly basis. Being that this humor is consumed so rapidly, its life cycle is greatly diminished, yeah. leaving few month old trends to feel like they came out decades ago. <laughs> this phenomenon brought rise to another staple of Generation uh, Z humor. Are you winning, son? Oh, Pierre, you want to come out here? Open Gangnam Style. 21. Sure, it's cool to like things when they're cool, but it's much cooler to wait until it's completely left everyone's brain just for you to bring it back in and enjoy it uh, ironically. Similar to the concept of movies that are so bad they're good. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? You enjoy some Oscar worthy acting right there. 
enjoy it because it is awful, and making fun of it and pretending to enjoy it is, in its own right, entertaining. And this can apply to jokes and memes and music even. This is what allows outdated memes to receive a second life under the guise of ironic enjoyment, being only now that they're so unfunny and so unpopular that they can once again become funny. Sort of like recycling. Not good. Delicious. Finally. Some good f***ing food. And sometimes the fact that the joke doesn't make any sense is itself the punchline. Take, for example, the Xie Hao Piao trend on TikTok. In July of 2020, I don't get so. What was what was funny about that though? Hao what Piao what trend say? on TikTok. Host a Xue Hao Pao Chao concert and a bunch of emojis. In July of Can someone explain that to me, please? Explain the humor in that. Genuinely, genuinely. I'm not taking the mic. 2020, there was a TikTok trend wherein people would use the chorus of the song, Xie Hao Piao, as the punchline for their joke. There wasn't inherently anything funny about the joke, and even when you translate it back to English, it didn't make the memes make sense. But the fact that nobody really knew what it meant and that it was so ill fitting as the punchline to a joke is what inherently right. made it funny. I see. It also helps that this is a song that most people admit to enjoying, at least ironically. This trend was later replaced by Baka Mitai, a song from a game called Yakuza Zero, wherein your character goes to a karaoke bar and sings a deeply emotional Japanese song. <laughs> No food! Three days! Oh, crabby patties, huh? Find us under the sea! Cringe! Gen Z is the generation of limitless options. They were never oh forced to just listen to the radio. They could pick from any song ever created and listen to it whenever they wanted. It's crazy, because it's like, you kind of, it's weird. You can so quickly fall behind the trend. Like, like it's kind of how I feel now with some of this, uh, TikTok and IG humor. It's like, cause I've kind of like not been into it very much. I'm now like behind the curve. And I, like, if I don't start consuming more of it, it'll like change into something else. And I'll leave, I'll be even further behind. It's weird. Like, do I try and hop on the bandwagon or do I just let it go? Right now, I'm just feeling like letting it go because I just don't get it. I just don't get half of the jokes. And because so much variety exists, uniqueness is highly valued. On the flip side of that idea, mainstream content is despised. You got the once popular trends like you dabbing, stink. the Harlem Shake, and Fortnite were all completely ruined by their mainstream use in media, such as being featured on major news networks and being referenced by their parents. So when a song or meme that they've seen before is used by, say, a company to promote a product, it immediately becomes untouchable. And at this point, it's no longer cool to like it, even ironically. But now, even in social circles, if someone has seen a meme before, it no longer has value. You've had to see it somehow at the point of conception, and if wow. you're late to the party, you automatically suck. So if trends oh. like video games and celebrities and songs and even meme templates are hated just because they're mainstream, how can any humor exist at all? Any joke or style that's been around is now considered completely invalid by Gen Z, so they're forced to constantly adapt to a new idea of what is considered funny. Sounds, sounds, uh... Challenging. Take a look at this picture. This was for a brief time considered the embodiment of Gen Z humor. But why? Why? What is the significance? <laughs> Where's that from? Why? Why? I need to see that. Why? Why? What is the significance <laughs> of the statement, like me and the boys at 2 a.m. looking for beans? What even is this image? Well, this is considered funny for a few reasons. For starters, it takes a phrase used frequently, me and the boys, and then subverts the direction of the joke that you would, as the reader, suspect. It adds an odd time to be doing anything, 2 a.m., and an action, looking for beans. Beans existed for a brief time as the universal funny word. In the early 2000s, the funny word was potato, and so the use of the word in the food was itself it? and images inherently Apparently added an air of randomness to catch the reader off guard and evoke a sense of humor. The image itself, being frightening, adds a sense of edginess, while the poor quality, in fact it's completely unrelated to the caption, creates a sense of rebellion to the standards of modern humor. Which brings us to our next topic. So 
seaside. Everyone always talks about the boys, but I haven't been invited to a hangout since seventh grade. I'm a senior in high school. Damn. Poor guy. I don't wanna die, but I don't wanna live like this. I just wanna feel something! I just wanna feel something! Gen Z also has some of the highest mental health issues of any generation. They're plagued with things like depression, social anxiety, and thanks to growing up with access to endless information, existential dread. So how does this relate to humor? Well, these problems and fears are all directly influencing this generation's sense of comedy. Take for example the popular subreddit called To Me IRL For Me IRL. Nearly every post is about depression, suicide, loneliness, or social anxiety. Oh and so God. even for the members of the generation not experiencing these problems, their humor is equally influenced by it merely due to the exposure caused by the memes being in circulation. However, some would argue that the millennial generation started the trend of depressed humor, but whether Generation Probably. Z adopted it or not, jokes about mental illness are still incredibly present throughout Gen Z humor, if not somewhat- Oh my god, what was that just on the screen just then? When someone says, <laughs> the bleach, oh my god, <laughs> I shouldn't- <laughs> Okay, this is pretty funny. This is the screwdriver in the plug. <laughs> to illness are still incredibly present throughout Gen Z humor, if not somewhat more subtle. I'm currently back in my favorite place, oh. the porta potty that I was at last week. You say peacock and no one bats an eye. But you say poopcock and everyone loses their mind. Since this generation is between the ages of 25 and zero, uh, most of the humor is meant for its own age group. Gen Z has an inherent drive to be counter to the popular culture. But while earlier generations might have gotten mohawks, dyed their nails black, danced publicly, or worn skirts above the ankles, Generation Z has to be much more covert about their rebellion, being as they're constantly being shut down. I matter! Shut up, Meg, you don't matter! Because gone are the days where a guy named Chad would come up to you, flick you in the chest, and call you a dork. Now that everyone is on the internet all the time, they have thousands of people constantly telling them what they should wear, watch, eat, and that what they like is something they should be ashamed of. Do you deserve rights based off your favorite anime? And if they aren't told directly, others might be publicly ashamed or embarrassed, leaving the people of Gen Z to be more self-conscious, hoping that they don't one day end up on a fail compilation. I do kind of feel bad for Gen Z because, you know, I was lucky, like, the first the internet what didn't really come around, like reach popularity till I was like maybe 13, 14. So I'd spent a good chunk of my childhood and adolescence without the internet, you know, going out with friends, you know, playing sports and stuff. Like my first phone was the Nokia 3310. Do you remember that phone? Like rock solid, no color, you know, very, very basic, no internet, obviously. But, you know, imagine being born and, you know, you're on the internet immediately. You've got all that information, like, thrusted it upon you. It's just, it, it definitely has got to do stuff to you upstairs, you know, for sure. Twitter page or harassing subreddit. How can you look like that and not be insecure? This kid needs cancer to hit him and his whole family. Oh. Uh, thank you for thinking of me and my family. I love oh this recipe. God. It would be fun to show people how to make That's it so that they can enjoy it. These cookies were not good. Nobody gonna mention how she's using a liquid measuring cup and not a- That's gotta be awful. People leaving nasty comments and then you see 9,000 people have hearted that. Yeah, this is awful, man. Awful. Like, like getting bullied by 10,000 people. A dry ingredient cup, I made them and they sucked. Here's an actually good recipe. This constant fear of rejection has caused the generation to resort to introversion and thusly awkwardness. And most of all, they've had to resort to different ways of expressing themselves and fighting societal norms. Such as distorting the audio of the punchline, which is funny because I said so. No, but actually this trend of low quality equals funny is incredibly popular purely for the reason of subverting comedic norms, such as distorting audio. Very, very interesting and weird. So what have we learned? If it's popular, it's no longer funny. If it was popular a long time ago, it's funny again. If you can get away with saying that it's ironically funny, it's funny. If the punchline doesn't inherently make any sense, 
it's funny. If something's considered incredibly unfunny, it's funny. But also remember that there's nothing that Gen Z likes more than changing and hating things. So this video is likely to become obsolete within a couple of weeks. Mm. But until then, here's your guide to Generation Z's humor. I hope you enjoyed it. And as wow. always, don't stop party rocking or you might make me spill my beans all over the place. Comically large spoon, my friends. Uh, have a good one. Where do you even begin? Where do you begin? It's, uh, to be honest, we can't really blame Gen Z for, you know, any weirdness that we we feel they might have because at the end of the day, you know, that the culture that they have is a direct byproduct of us, the people that came before them. You know, it's all of the, the way the world is, you know, people make the world what it is at least, you know, the technology side, the, the culture side. So, you know, they are us really. So we just have to kind of embrace them, you know, bring them into our warm embrace a little bit more. I definitely see for sure there's a lot more intro, introvertism. I don't know if that's a word, introvertedness in society, I think. It's weird, like the internet was meant to be a way of connecting people, but I feel like people are more alone now than ever like i definitely feel like you know people don't spend as much time together as they used to and i don't know if i like that you know i, I guess if you feel more comfortable in your own company then that's absolutely fine but i do think you know human beings are social creatures you know i i do feel like I think most people would be in a better mental space if they spent more time with other people, just in each other's company, talking, you know, doing things, making memories and stuff. But that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. It's an interesting thing to watch. You know, it definitely opened my eyes a little bit more to, to, to why Gen Z is the way they are. And I'm sure there's a lot of Gen Z that aren't like this, that, you know, are more like millennials and Gen, Gen Xers and, you know, even boomers, you could even say. So, yeah, like really fun video. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.